Very good evening to one and all of you. I would like to share a memory which is quite close to my heart of my grandfather when I was a little kid. And one Sunday morning, he wakes me up. He's like, Baro, we're going to the market. And you know, when we, you know the usual hustle bustle of an Indian market. So long, um, you know, my granny gave a list of things to buy and we went. And while we were at the market, he's like, he asked me a question. He's like, Akarsha, what do you want to be? Or who do you want to be when you grow up? And my instant answer was an architect, because I want to break down everything and rebuild everything in a much better way. And he just tapped me on the back of my head and said, can you see that street vendor over there? First do something for that person, and then you can be whatever you want. Fast forward a couple of years into school and then college, I came across Gandhi's talisman, which basically says that any decision you make in your personal life or professional life, as long as it impacts the poorest of the poor or helps them um, climb the social ladder, it's a great decision. And this thought process kind of you know, stuck at the back of my head. And going forward, when I went on to pursue my architecture degree, I worked work towards improving the image or the perception of our government buildings and looked at how we can make them more accessible and public, friend, public friendly and make them more welcoming to the public. And this sort of enabled me to understand how vibrant and at the same time how difficult Indian cities are to work in. And when I went on to pursue my masters, uh, in the Netherlands, I got an opportunity to work on solar power and a lot of other renewable energy options. And we used to, this solution used to be uh, promoted and used by a lot of music festivals in the Netherlands and especially in Amsterdam, because this was a clean energy solution. And in a lot of first world countries, they've moved on to clean energy and zero emission technologies to be adopted in their cities. And, and you know, I had a Swadesh moment um, when I was working on this project. And I said, wait a sec, if this can p uh, power an entire concert in a developed world, back home in India, it can definitely power an entire village and provide access to electricity and lighting, more importantly. And that's when I decided to come back and I said, okay, I'm gonna start something back home and really see how best we can improve the situation over here. So in order to impl implement the idea, or as a starting step, I put across a framework of different values or attributes. And I said, OK, we're looking at cultural traditions, values, clean energy, then citizen engagement, and more importantly, engaging with the bottom of the pyramid. So I'm just going to quickly run through a couple of United Development Sustainability Goals, which have also sort of you know, guided me through the work that I'm doing at this point of time. So, in terms of the traditions, I looked at, okay, how can we use the festival of Deepavali to provide solar powered light to street vendors? Because in terms of the basic needs or access to infrastructure, there are so many people who lack this access. I also got an opportunity to work with a woman-led FPO or a farmer producer organization in Madhya Pradesh in Orsha. If uh, some of you have seen ba the movie Bajirao Mastani, um, where uh, Deepika Padukone is the actress, um, this is the place where she was from. And I realized that in our country, especially in rural areas, a lot of people, they have high aspiration, but they don't know what to do or how to go about you know, achieving those aspirations in their lives. And these women were all directors in a farmer produce organization. So when I say directors, they're directors of a company. One of the person is a managing director. One person is a CEO. So we said, okay, how can we really look at instilling that confidence and self-respect in what they're doing? And we came up with a simple idea, which was to give them ID cards, which they could flaunt saying, okay, I am the member of this FPO and this is my role. So something as simple as an ID card, it can make such a big difference. Because all of you are wearing college ID cards, but the accountability it creates and the kind of responsibility it instills in you 
it makes a big difference. And while I was in Ocha, I also um, interacted with a few farmers who had issues with access to water. And that's why we came up with this portable solar pump, which could be rented and you know, um, shared amongst different farmers or these farmer groups. And I, while I was discussing with this farmer called Deepu, who's a vegetable farmer, I'm like, okay, what are the challenges you face? And you know, um, now since you have a solar pump, which can be shared amongst a lot more when, uh, farmers, what's the next challenge that you see? And he said that when he grows his vegetables and he takes it to the city, there are a lot of challenges in the market that he faces. So that's where I understood this dependency between rural and urban areas. So on one hand, you have a lot of, there's a high density of um, farmers in rural areas, but there's a high density of consumption in urban areas. And once you come to a market, you understand the, this interdependency. And at the same time, you just realize that there are so many inefficiencies in the entire system. So in terms of food wastage, um, in terms of the finance options, and more importantly, from the lens of an architect, I noticed that they didn't have, ac they didn't have access to something as simple as a solar powered light or lighting. And can you imagine that there are at least about one lakh street vendors in a city like Bangalore, which roughly you know, comes up to about 1%. And these street vendors are the real entrepreneurs from my perspective, because we all look at uh, startups in a formal way, but if you really look at the street vendors, they're all entrepreneurs in their own right. And uh, since, through this interaction with street vendors, I realized that lighting was the low hanging fruit and we said, okay, let's see how best we can provide lighting to these street vendors to just sell their, you know, uh, where that they're putting across. And also just on the same time, we, uh, we came across demonetization and because of demonetization, a lot of vendors started accepting digital payments. And one of the vendors told me that, sir, to charge my phone, I pay five to 10 rupees at the nearest bakery. Can you believe it? Something as simple as charging your phone. People on the streets are paying somebody to charge their battery. And that's when I integrated the mobile charging option. It's something as simple as just providing a USB jack on, your bat on the battery pack. And the biggest outcome, apart from higher income levels and longer working hours, was the aspect of trust. Customers who went to these vendors with these lights started believing that this vendor will not, uh, will not cheat me. They were able to see all the tomatoes or the vegetables. They were able to pick the right ones they wanted. Because as Indians, we all like to touch and feel the product before we buy. That's how it's been you know, uh, ingrained in our culture from a very long time up. Although off late, we're used to this um, online culture where we just at the press of a button and 10 minutes, you've got your products. But traditionally, we want to go to the spots, touch and feel, feel comfortable, analyze the product, and then pick it up. And another very interesting um, outcome from this entire exercise that we um, off giving these solar powered lights during Diwali was that the children of these vendors would use the lights to study during their exams. And I asked one of the kids, I'm like, okay, so you now you know how to use the product and what would you want to do next? And he said, uncle, uncle, when I grow up and when we build a house, I would definitely use solar power to power a house because then we don't have to pay the electricity bill. So suddenly you're able to talk about all the United Nations Sustainability De Development Goals at a very young age. You're inculcating sustainability at that very young age. So that was the biggest outcome of conducting this activity where we provided these lights during Diwali. And going on, we also looked at how light can improve urban safety. So if you look up the slide, this is in Bangalore, Yalanka. And the vendor, her name is Sabina. And she usually sell, sells uh, tea and a lot of other chota mota snacks at the, close by to the railway station. So sometimes at night when a lot of women have to cross this path from the station to the bus stop, they see if she's present. Only if she's there, they decide to cross that path of 30 meters. Otherwise, they have to walk another extra 500 to 600 meters across and then reach the bus stop. So from an urban safety point of view, 
just having a well-lit vendor makes a big difference. Since this was a crowdfunded activity, we actually data, like mapped the data and geotagged each and every vendor because we were answerable to all the funders who supported this campaign. And suddenly we started noticing that we're looking at vegetable vendors, tea stall vendors, fruit vendors, so different, different, different um, vendors, we started categorizing them. And that acted as a database for a lot more things in the coming slides. The next step was, okay, we looked at lighting, what next? The push cart, uh, providing um, solar power, and then looking at how we can use the electricity to ex generate extra revenue for the vendor. And also look at how we can look at cold storage as a shared service. So each vendor, each food vendor would you know, use the fridge, pay about 10 to 50 rupees per day, use the fridge to keep their paneer, chutney, or certain perishables. And I put all of these different aspects together and said, okay, cold storage, solar lighting, you know, the complete push cart, and said, okay, can we look at the larger space, which is the market itself? Uh, this is called, this is on Vijayalakshmi Road here in Davangiri itself. And this is the proposal that we submitted to the Smart City Initiative, uh, where we said, can we recreate the market, provide basic amenities, give cold storage, give something like clean, like clean access to clean toilets, where you you know give proper areas to uh, for the vendors to sell their vegetables, and looked at you know parking spaces, basically a multi-stakeholder approach. So your shop owners also don't complain, but at the same time it's more equitable where everybody in the society has access to infrastructure. And another outcome from this entire process has been that can we create an app like Swiggy or Zomato where you open your phone and you say, I want Bendekai or tomato right now, and you put on a location, and it gives you the nearest person selling it. So how can we look at connecting the demand and supply? This would, in the long run, um, enable a lot more opportunities for the vendors and for customers as well. And when we did the vending, when we did the design for the vending zone, the municipality said that we don't have enough people to conduct the survey. So I said, okay, if that's the case, can we look at collaborating with students? And we created an activity where we said, we divided about 60, 70 students into teams. We said, you have half an hour, go into the city, use this app, and literally just get the basic data of these vendors and map them. So we were able to identify 800 vendors in just half an hour. And if you're looking at the population of Davangere, which is about roughly four and a half to five lakh plus, and we take about 1%, which is an estimate, um, to be the number of street vendors, we're still about one-fifth of that 1%. So there's a long way to go. But the idea that I'm trying to convey here is that by collaborating with education institutions, students, and the government, and the private sector, we're able to achieve a lot more for the society to sort of go ahead. So this is, again, um, one of the students who was uh, collecting the data. And we also have told them that you have to now create like a Facebook page, or enable them to be digitally active, like maybe create a Google location pin, just put them up online, because in today's context, digital is where the business happens. And one very interesting thing happened, and um, this is specifically with regard to the topic or the, you know, the, the, the idea about fracturing boundaries. Before, when I, when I started this idea of, you know, okay, let's provide solar-powered lights during Diwali, a lot of people said, no, this is not going to work. I mean, why would you want to give light, especially to a street vendor? I mean, they're such a nuisance. And I said, wait, if we're able to reimagine the way we can celebrate certain festivals or be more inclusive in the way we celebrate, can we really look at taking that first step to go forward? And this was about... 2017 and 2020, this initiative got recognized by the Alumni Association of my alma mater uh, during the World Economic Forum by United Nations. And currently, I'm working with just a few urban local bodies, whereas we have about 3,700 urban local bodies across the country. And there is immense potential to sort of transform urban India and be very inclusive along the journey. And I'm doing it one light at a time. Thank you so much.